permitted by the general laws of the state of New York. Three, to enforce such penal statutes as police officers are permitted to enforce pursuant to the general laws of the state of New York and in furtherance of said special duties, police officers are hereby authorized to use of a town vehicle to be known as police officer's vehicle, which may be equipped with emergency lights in accordance with applicable sections of the vehicle and traffic law, and may use the state and county radio to the extent permitted by the general laws of the state of New York, and may carry firearms while on duty in compliance with the general laws of the state of New York and pertaining to police officers generally, and I move its adoption. Second. Board Member Dishlefine? Yes. Board Member Storms? Yes. Board Member Van Barkham? Yes. Supervisor Van? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Who's that? Open public comment. We have 
have zoning laws in the town of Champaign that apply to junkyards. The code is not my area of expertise, but I urge you, the board, to look at sections 83-2, 83-3, 83-4, Eighty-three-twelve. One of the things they specify is that a junkyard must be licensed. There is no license. They detail that junkyards must be surrounded by an eight-foot fence set back 50 feet from the highway. As you can see, there's no fence. 25 feet from the other neighboring property. A particular note, section 116.10, specifies that unenclosed storage of junk cars, car parts, and other materials is prohibited in all zones. That means business and residential. The 52 wrecks stuffed on this lot are leaking hazardous materials. They attract rodents. They are a fire hazard and an eyesore, while at all the same time diminishing the neighbor's property values. Formal complaints registered with our code enforcement officer and personal appeals to the owner have fallen on deaf ears. The board needs to take action to address the problem. The next set of pictures highlights a former store that was stripped to the studs and left to rot. In its place, we have what insurance people call an attractive nuisance that invites vandalism. The building permit is no longer posted, and as far as I can tell, has expired. It's not really new. Finally, I'd like you to consider a tent city that has become a permanent yard sale. Operating as a year-round business that's now selling a car and a boat, along with all the other paraphernalia. This is an illegal business in a residential zone. It creates a traffic hazard on Route 28 multiple cars parking illegally on the highway shoulder in a residential zone. Our primary focus tonight is on businesses, but it needs to be said that there are examples of residents with unsightly junk in their front yards, mattresses, and tires, household garbage, all dumped in plain sight of the roadway. I know the town is contemplating a tax to generate funds for encouraging tourists, but who's going to want to come and view this? We have existing zoning regulations. They are not being enforced. These owners have gotten notices and more notices from the code enforcement officer, but it stops there. There must be consequences for ignoring the law, for diminishing your neighbor's property values, and for destroying what has been proudly labeled a scenic byway. I love the fact you'll see in the pictures, the poster for scenic byway is right smack in front of the junkyard. <laughs> <laughs> Given the conditions just detailed, we appeal to the town board to give the code enforcement officer whatever tools he needs to clear these messes. We will be here in July find out what specific actions were taken and what results were obtained. Thank you for your time. So uh, I'll wait till I can see you again. Actually. By the way, uh, we, we passed around a, a, a petition uh, starting uh, last week and uh, in Big Indian. And we've got 52 signatures. You know, that came just like that. So th there is a lot of public support to do something. Now, we all know who the owners are. We love them dearly. They're great people. Uh, they have done a lot for our community, and they continue to do good for the community. But nevertheless, they've got junk on their property that is diminishing the value of all the surrounding properties and people are getting finally upset to the point where they want to see something happen and, and so I'm going to pass out these are the signatures
somebody has to get in contact with the owners of these three commercial properties that we're talking about. Uh, we didn't go into residential properties. Uh, these are three commercial properties that uh, have a great effect on people passing through or living in uh, the big Indian areas. So we hope that during the next month some action can be taken and a report given back to the community next month as to you know, how this situation is going to be resolved. Um, I can give you a report right now, actually. Uh, so, how we, we did receive the email this morning, and I know that it's been a concern the beginning of the day for a number of years. And again, we all, we know these owners love them, appreciate them being there, but just want it to be cleaned up. Uh, first off, I want to say that uh, the gentleman that owns the large junkyard, as you're calling it, um, did stop in today. He was, how he came down earlier today when we got the email, told me that yep, he and Chuck had been in conversation several times. Uh, finally, he had given him a notification letter saying we're gonna start finding you if you don't rectify this issue. That time is up next week. Now Chuck stopped in today, and understandably, um, he might need a little more, more time as his father just passed this past week, so he's dealing with that right now. But he has promised myself and other board members that he is fully, looking to, rec to rectify the situation at that lot specifically, and we have already taken action to where we were ready to go and start finding him in the middle of this month was his court date. Well, yeah, that's, that's one, hold on. Um, on the other one, and I know the gentleman, the owner is here, and if people would like to address it, I'm sure you can, but as far as I understand when I spoke to Howie this morning, that that still has a current building permit. It's up for renewal, but it still has a standing building permit. So. That might be a question of how you, whether it needs to be buttoned up or what could be done. Um, I'll, I'll address it. Um, so I support everything that you guys are talking about. I am the owner of one of those uh, properties, which I uh, purchased with the intent of opening and got down to the beginnings of uh, the renovation on it discover that it was in much worse condition than I had anticipated and the whole building was about to fall into the road. Uh, the, um, <clears throat> I've done a minimal amount to secure the building. The building should come down by most measures, but it would be nice to salvage it because it has historical uh, significance and it's been there forever and it's not or whatever. Uh, it requires very substantial investment to uh, get that building functional again, uh, which I am committed to making, but um, have to work out a few things that allow that to be justified, that, that um, investment, namely uh, a parking solution that I've been pursuing for a while and a septic solution and a few other things. In the meantime, uh, I certainly agree that there's no justification for leaving it in that state. Uh, and um, actually had a, uh, a date on the calendar to seal it up and create at least a presentable facade. Unfortunately, uh, fate intervened and broke my foot. So uh, that date has been pushed back to, until uh, the coming weekend. But, uh, you know, we as property owners and stakeholders in this community have to take a responsibility to maintain the quality of the community that we're trying to enjoy and to promote and better. I take responsibility for my uh, portion of that, but I strongly encourage uh, diligent follow-up on the other points because, you know, these points, uh, this is nothing new. I know that these concerns have been addressed to the board over the years, and it's not like any of this cropped up out of nowhere. Uh, it's been an ongoing thing, and I can tell you as someone who has significant interests in the commercial viability of the Indian in particular, that it's very difficult to justify uh, significant investment in the community 
while the town board allows for uh, things that devalue the any investment that you make is marginalized because it's always next to something that is an eyesore and a problem and in some cases kind of dangerous. So uh, this is a, a matter that hopefully will gain traction, not just with the board, but also with the community. I'll do my part to move to that, but the, uh, uh, I think that the overall uh, seriousness of this matter, you know, this community is, in a pitiful, is at a pitiful point. One that hasn't been seen in generations. There's an opportunity in this community to harness the, the resurgence of interest uh, that is occurring with people rediscovering the cat skills and everything else. If we don't take advantage of this, it will pass the community by and uh, <coughs> growth and progress will uh, be lost, perhaps, for another several generations. It's been many generations since anyone could say there's a viable opportunity here. Uh, I know because I've watched it for the past four years. Plus, and uh, you know, I'm excited about it, and you know, uh, it, it will be uh, much more uh, prosperous, and the town will be much better served if it enforces its own standards and it identifies what standards it wants, and then enforces those accordingly. And you know, as uh, stakeholder, I hope that. Thank you. Um, let me just let me add too that uh, I know that there's a residential property you had mentioned, and I know that's been on the radar for quite some time, and that is being addressed as well. Uh, that had a postponement in court that is due to reappear this month as well in court. Um, as far as the garage, the perpetual yard sale, uh, I did bring that to Howie's attention again. Uh, that's something that just to be honest, fell by the wayside. Uh, Warren Tutt had started addressing it with the owner. They had brought him before the planning and zoning boards. Uh, they had started going through a process. Warren left. Howie had started picking it up, but Howie, again, I think when he first came in, was a little overwhelmed with some of the stuff that was going on, and it kind of fell by the wayside. But I brought it back to his, I did bring it back to his attention once it started gearing up again this year, because there were several instances, as you said, where he had somebody stopping on this side of 28 and literally just stepping out of the car and walking across the road. And, and that's not going to be good. There's going to be a tragic accident here at some point. So we'll do our best again to try to continue to, to get them to enforce this. Again, Howie's a busy man. He's trying to get all the certifications done. He's trying to address all the building permits and everything that he can. Um, but he's <coughs> with it and say we need these enforcement actions. And really, you need to bring these to the planning and zoning boards to make them aware of it because they're the ones that are going to make the decisions regarding these, these properties moving forward. Um, they're the ones that have the regulatory right. They have the right to tell the zoning officer, you need to do this and give notification or give violation to these properties. So, but I, I certainly appreciate where you're coming. Again, I've seen it, we've seen it, we recognize it, and uh, we'll do our best to continue moving forward and clean it up. I, I want to be sure I understand. Do you think this presentation should go to the zoning? And I don't think it hurts. I don't think it doesn't hurt you. I mean, it, it's okay. nothing but helping and you can explain the situation as a whole because I can tell you with Warren when he was addressing that other situation on 28 that there was nobody there to argue against the issue because they really didn't, weren't aware that it was going before that board. It was just kind of moving through the standard process. So it's being aware of what's going on in those boards and making them aware of how serious you consider the situation. I'm on the planning board. I'll bring it up at the next meeting. We did discuss a yard sale in the law, but it sort of drifted away and uh, bring it up again. The owner pretty much told us that we had no law against yard sales like his. He could just do whatever he wanted to. Yeah, it was again one of those that falls through the cracks, and we don't have the yard sale law. 
Specifically, forget the yard sale law, you're not allowed to park in the state right away. So all the cars that are parked there, just put the, put the town police car there one day. Everybody who stops, give them a ticket. It'll stop. My question is, who does, who does the zoning officer work for? Who is his superior? Who's the answer to that? The answer to the planning board and zoning boards and the town board, all three. All three. All three. Who has final approval of yes or no town? That's going to be planning board or zoning board. Okay. My question is... They're the ones that give the determination of the law. Okay. So. The first question is, does the zoning officer have the tools he needs to enforce the laws? Does he have the support of his superiors? Does he have the right regulations in place? Uh, does he have the ability to assess punitive measures? And if so, what are they? The second question is, does he have the authorization to do that? The third question is, does he have the support to do that from the zoning board and from the town board? Without that support, he's dust. Let's face it. Okay. But I'm, I'm just saying, I'll speak for myself, but I'm sure this goes for a lot of people. If these people need help in cleaning up, there's no doubt in my mind that we can find volunteers to help them. There's no doubt. If someone has, a, has an issue with collecting stuff and can't seem to part with it, send them on vacation for a day. We'll take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? There's no lack of community spirit to help people. We don't want to see anybody punished, but we do want to see our community cleaned up Again, I'll um, yeah, I just want to, you, you had three questions, I think. I think it was yes, yeah. yes, and yes were the answers, actually, as far as I know. I mean, we, we, uh, again, I'm going to tell you that Howie, for, for me, Howie, if Howie's doing the job, it's the same as a police officer. So if they're going out and giving speeding tickets, I'm not going up to them and saying, you're not writing enough speeding tickets, you know, you're doing that. your job. But every day you drive by the gas station. And every day, you never see a car going, you only see cars added. As Howie's boss, do you ever say, Howie, what the hell is going on? So again, you know, we had this conversation last results. fall. Results. And it was going to be approached to that person personally, and then we were going to move forward. And that's, what, that's the way it's gone down, is that Howie had conversations with the gentleman, it was, it was a lot of talk, and again, back and forth. We've had and, discussions. And then he said he made the move, and he wrote the letter. He sent the letter. Now the letter's there. He was due to go to violation this month. So I'm just saying, going as we talk, the cars get at it. Sooner or later, the talk's got to stop, and the car's got to go away. I know. I hate to say it. I think I saw him bring one when I came here. I'm, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dave has had his hand up for a while. Dave Pillar, uh, live in the town of Shandaken. Um, I have some questions or concerns about the proceedings with the short-term rental committee. So I understand there's no representative on the committee who has an STR, is that correct? Correct. And why? Okay, so I'll do this again. Uh, we say this every time in committee meetings and it feels like we're just uh, spinning our wheels. But Woodstock has just implemented laws. They had, they had their committee put together. We have other towns that put their committees together, and they actually just went and created a law. They didn't offer public input. They didn't offer any surveys. They didn't ask for any questions from the public at large. Uh, the committee that we made was myself, Kevin Drew Larkin, so two town board members, two planning board members, the code enforcement officer, and a zoning board member. These are the boards that are probably going to address these issues moving forward if there is a law to be created, if regulations be put in place. What we're doing is we're gauging the public. We're asking the public at large, not just short-term rental owners, not just hotel owners. We're asking general questions about how do you perceive this activity and how do you feel about it? So that's all this committee was intended to do. We've said on several occasions that we are going to create a new committee following this that will take the survey results, they will get together, they will meet, again, it will be planning board and zoning board members as well, but there'll be members of the public involved. 
I don't know what the makeup of the committee is. That's going to be up to this board to decide who's on that board and of, on that committee. But there will be discussion. Uh, the survey is wrapping up, as I said, next Monday. We have a good mixed result, I think, from across the board. You have people that don't have short-term rentals. You have people that have hotels. You have people that have short-term rentals themselves. Um, it's, it's a mixed and varied result. I'm actually surprised by a couple of the responses that we got. Um, and surprised, actually, from second homeowners who had some issues. Um, but for the most part, it's very balanced. Uh, again, I think when it all shakes out, it's prob you probably look at the biggest issue is the non-owner occupied buildings. Mm -hmm. The buildings that are being bought up by people having multiple buildings without any intentional living in them or residing in them or allowing them to rent. Okay. So that's what we're seeing. And we'll, we'll see more of the results come Monday. But um, yeah, that was just, this is an initial committee and we're taking our time with this and walking through okay. this. All right, so I understand that and I thank you for, for saying what you said, but it seems to me that if I were proceeding in good faith with this, I would have then invited a couple of people who have STRs as maybe in an advisory position to be on the committee to, you, you know, the point, as you said, is to get the best perspective on this. And when you're when you're proceeding with a start.